This video is sponsored by Squarespace. One question I get asked a lot is, Manny, you use a lot of different cameras. Which one is your favorite? And that is a hard question for me to answer because they all serve a different purpose for me. So instead, here are my top five cameras and why I personally enjoy using them so much. In no specific order, the Canon R5 still one of my favorite cameras to use, even after four years. Damn, it's been four years since this camera's been out. Personally, I would use this camera more, especially with one of my favorite portrait lenses ever, the 85 millimeter 1.2. Thing is that I have to use the latest gear to make YouTube videos with. If it wasn't for that, I would be, again, I would be using this camera much more often for my portraiture. This camera is truly a Swiss army knife camera. It could do almost every genre of photography at a pretty, pretty high level. I've always said that the R5 is kind, it's kind of like the iPhone of cameras. And I say that because iPhones are easy to use. They're pretty straightforward. The R5 is such an easy camera to use, right? There aren't like a million different pages in the menu system. You don't have to take, you know, a, a, a block off half your day to customize it and set it up the way you need it. Okay, like other camera systems. <laughs> like this is really, really approachable camera and it's a very easy camera to use. I really love that about, about this, about the R5. I also think that the imaging sensor in the R5 is probably the best imaging sensor that they put in any camera. And that's just my opinion from my experience, but the, the sensor in here, like the image quality, dynamic range, color science, I just think that it, it rivals anything, any other full frame sensor out there right now in 2024. So coming from someone that has a lot of experience with cameras and a lot of different cameras, the R5 is one of the most comfortable cameras to hold in the hand. So if I go like this to the Canon, this is kind of sus, but you know what? My point is, you know, it doesn't have any like sharp edges, right? Kind of like my Sony. Sony has more sharper edges. This camera has a soft rubber grip and it's so comfortable to hold. So shooting for a long period of time, this camera is going to be much more comfortable in the hand. It's going to just it's gonna give me less fatigue over time, especially when putting these really heavy lenses on the camera. There's no pressure on my knuckles at all. There's plenty of space. One of the most comfortable cameras to hold, period. I also love the rear screen on the R5. Not only that it flips, but the quality of it. The images, I mean, Canon's always got the screens right. My old 5D Mark III, I always felt like the images look beautiful on the rear screen. I was always excited to show the person, whoever I'm shooting, the rear screen because the images don't already damn near look edited on here. Sometimes they look better on here than they do on the computer. They've always got it right. And I just, I really appreciate the rear screen quality, uh, especially being a portrait photographer. And the autofocus on the R5. One of the best autofocusing systems out there, even in 2024. Still one of the best. It's just, this is a camera that's just really hard not to love. It can do everything and do it really well so i'm interested i'm going to be curious to see what they're going to improve what they're going to improve on with the r5 mark ii because this camera is already it's going to be an extremely relevant camera for a very long time another one of my favorite cameras is the nikon z8 i think this camera is really slept on in the community right i think that i mean pound for pound this camera is probably the most powerful mirrorless camera out there right now when we're when we're looking at both photo and video and the, being able to do it all like because it's not competing with any cinema cameras or at least not yet uh with the acquisition of red but so far i mean this camera can do it all but that's only very like partially of why i like picking this camera up uh for one i really love the design of the z8 this is one of my favorite camera designs i know that's a little bit bigger than the other ones but it's just I love the curves. I, I love the way my hand feels on here. This is one of those cameras that I just like sitting on the couch and just holding the camera for no reason at all. Just holding it. I love the design. I love the build quality. Maybe it reminds me of, you know, the old DSLR cameras. It, it feels very, very premium in the hand. Um, I do appreciate that about this camera. You're getting top tier image quality and color science. I love looking through the viewfinder and this might be a little kind of a niche thing but i don't know what they they, they made it like the experience of putting your eye 
to the viewfinder like this, and I got the mic right here, so I'm probably gonna scrape it a little bit. But putting my eye up to the viewfinder here, the way it like just sits on my orbital bone, I don't know what it is. Another reason why I really love Nikon D8 and Nikon in general, okay? I'm able to record the viewfinder in here. So it has a dirty HDMI out. So I'm able to hook up a recorder and I can record everything that's going on in the EVF with the autofocusing points and the settings while being able to still use the EVF. Sony and Canon, for example, it disables the EVF. And I really like that, especially being someone that does a lot of work here on YouTube. And I would, from an educational perspective, it's cool that I can show you that. So that's a, a very niche thing to me, but I really, lo really love use. I love picking up the Z8 because I know that I will be able to get that extra angle, that extra footage. But again, that's something that's very specific to me. On the Z8, I love the rear screen. I know I keep talking about rear screens, but I, it's an underrated thing. It's not talked about enough because on my Sony's, I'm not a big fan of the rear screens and I'm always having to tell people look in the viewfinder, especially if it's like a, a sweaty day out there. You got like a little bit sweat, like the sweat marks in the EVF and they're probably like, I don't want to put my eye in here. But the having a, a good quality rear screen and being able to show and being able to give them the best representation of the work or what you're doing, it goes a long way, you know, it goes a long way in the experience. And so I love the rear screen quality, but also I think Nikon, if I'm just thinking about me behind the camera, this is the best screen hinge out of any, right? The, the A7R5, I love the four-way screen, the hinge, because it, it can also flip, you know, around. But the problem with that screen is that if I'm gonna do a low angle shot vertically, I'm gonna have to flip the screen out, right? And do that whole maneuver with the Z8 because this can't, this screen doesn't flip, you know, for selfie, I can just do it like this. And now I got the vertical screen without having to do that whole spin -a with the flip screen. So I do, that's something, that's something I do appreciate about this camera. If you like customizing your camera, the Nikon Z8 is going to be your favorite because there are a ton of different options in the menu. And that goes along with just Nikon giving you so many different features, flagship features in the Z8. And I kind of love how much Nikon loves their cameras, right? Like their, their upper, their, their top tier cameras like the Z8, Z9, they really, they put some beefy firmware updates into these cameras and it makes you feel like you have a brand new camera, you know? So that's also a big plus with the Z8. All right, so I wanna take a quick moment and thank the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace makes it so easy and seamless to set up a website for your business, whether that's an online store, a blog, or a personal site like mine. Squarespace has this theme called Blueprint AI that gives you unique design and styling options to best align with your brand. A feature that can give your site some personality. I'm currently tinkering with it right now because I plan on doing an entire redesign pretty soon. It's also been effortless to manage my online store, selling my presets, and even more recently, I've been building out an appointments feature that will allow my viewers and site visitors to schedule a mentorship call with me in just a few quick steps. So if you use the coupon code Manny, you will get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So check them out. Link will be in the description. So you guys might actually give me a little shit for this one. The Sony A1 is my favorite Sony camera to use. And last year I made a video saying, or talking about how why I'm switching from the A7R5 to the A, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm switching from the A1 to the A7R5. And it was mostly for the upgrades and the things that mattered to me the most at the time. But as time has passed, I slowly found myself going back to the A1 for a couple different reasons. The flip screen and, and having that four-way screen was amazing, but having the ZV-E1 pretty much cover a lot of the video and it's such a compact camera, I didn't really care too much. I didn't really need the flip screen on the A7R5 anymore. And the autofocus obviously was is better. The, the white balance, I feel like is, a, is, is I'm getting more consistent skin tones on the A7R5, but there's certain features on the A1 that just kind of win, still win me over. So for example, I feel like there's nothing I can't do with this camera. I can go shoot Major League Baseball and I have access to 30 frames per second at 50 megapixels raw, something I can't do with another system at the moment. 
I can go to the studio and shoot some portraits. And if I, even if I want to take my dog to the dog park and take photos of my dog running at 30 FPS, that's something I can do. The icing on the cake with the A1 is that you're getting all the features and those, those flagship specs, but the camera is still very, very compact. On the A1, I really love the electronic viewfinder. This is the best mirrorless electronic viewfinder out of any camera, I think. It's got 240 frames per second refresh. It's like looking at the in the IMAX theater. This is what it looks like in there. So when you review an image, I can see all the details. The 1400 flash scene speed on this camera is just something that is hard to go back from. So in the studio, I can sync my flashes up to 1400. And I just did a photo shoot the other day with the A1. And being able to cut the ambient lighting just a little bit, right, from 1 to 50th to 1 400 of a second, it's a it's a it's a decent amount of ambient light that I can cut without having to like stop uh stop my aperture down if that's not what I wanted. You know what I'm saying? So it does come in handy in that 1 400 sync speed is something that is really hard. It's just really hard to go back from. I'm repeating myself at this point. This is a small thing, but I just love the shutter sound of the camera and i know that this is something that probably no one's going to care about They're gonna be like why are you even talking about this but it's just a very pleasant shutter sound it's very smooth but you can still hear it the model can hear it because they like to be able to hear the shutter but it's just soft i don't know pleasant like the a7r5 i'm not a fan of the shutter a7r3 goes thurr -up, thurr -up. It's something that's very personal to me, but I do like the feeling and the sound of the camera. Here's another one that's very personal to me. I prefer the design of the A1 against or over any other design that they have, right? So the A7R5, A7S3, A7IV, they they don't have the dial here on the left side of the camera that, con that controls your drive settings. Personally, I feel like that's a waste of space. I like having the drive setting here so that I can change I don't know, I, I feel like it's a waste of custom buttons to uh, for the drive settings. I do like having it there. I don't know, it's a very personal thing to me, but the look of the camera just, I don't know. I feel like it's just makes use of the space. It's really hard to explain, but I do appreciate that. This camera is quickly becoming one of my favorites. This is the Hasselblad X2D medium format camera. This is the Rolls Royce of cameras, okay? It's around $8,000 just for the camera body, so it's a luxury item for sure. Since this camera only does photography, this is like a videographer's red camera where you don't care about the hybrid specs. You only want the best video quality possible. This is what that that's the equivalent for photographers. And that's how I feel when I hold this camera. That's one of the first things actually that I noticed about holding this camera. It, it makes me feel like I'm like I'm that dude, like the dude from Gladiator, Commodus, I think, or the dude Jaquin Phoenix on the chariot. That's that's how I feel when I'm holding this camera. Actually, it's funny because anyone that comes to my apartment, like my mom comes to my apartment, I'm like mom, hold this camera. Everyone around me has to hold and experience how amazing the Hasselblad X2D feels in the hand. There's just no other camera out there like it. I love the Scandinavian design with the hints of orange. The, in the engraved H's everywhere. I mean, it's a thing of beauty. I love that this camera has an internal one terabyte SSD. I hope future camera manufacturers start doing this with their cameras because it, you know you know what it's like picking up a camera and you're getting ready for a job and you pick it up and it says no card in camera. And you're just like, bro, like now I gotta go back up whatever's on here. You gotta get the anxiety of formatting it and all that. like. That whole process with this camera, with the one terabyte and the 100 megapixel files, I can save up to over 4,000 images. So I've done jobs with this camera. I don't even gotta think about it. I just pick up the camera, put it in the bag. I don't gotta worry about it. The rear screen on here, just 3.6 inch screen. This is like a, looks like an iPad mini. On the Hasselblad X2D, this has a leaf shutter system. So unlike conventional cameras where you have a flash scene speed, usually 1 200, 1 250th of a second, this because it's in the lens, <laughs> you're getting up to one four thousand flash sync speed, which means that now you're not you don't ever have to go into high speed sync and you can use the flashes as they were intended. So I made a video, I think last year where I said I was wrong about medium format and I compared it to all the other full frame cameras, right? The R5, the Z8, A7R5 and even the Fuji GFX 102. I'm telling you that 
the, the color science in this camera specifically is the best that I've ever used in any camera. It's actually the most accurate representation of what you're looking at. And you will see that in the files. There's files that you could download in that video. Maybe I'll put a card up, hopefully I don't forget. But the files are so rich in color. There's so much just fidelity and, and depth in those files, man. It'll blow your mind. But the truth is, in most scenarios, you're not gonna notice the difference between even an A7 IV to this camera in some scenarios, depending on the lighting and such, and, this, and this, just the scenario. But more, in most cases, you will notice a difference. And in some, you're gonna notice a big difference. So the color science, the best out of any camera. But I can also argue that color science nowadays it isn't as important if you know how to edit. One thing that I didn't realize I was gonna love so much about this camera is the aspect ratio of the image that it puts out. So it puts out a more boxy four by three image than when compared to full frame. I like that, especially when you're shooting models and let's say they change up the pose and they move their arm out here. Now you're not cutting off any of the limbs. You know, you're not cutting anything off. You kind of keep everyone or you keep them in the frame. Really like that. And just the overall kind of usability. It's, it's a very simple camera, very straight to the point camera to use, even more straight to the point than the Canon one. It isn't a tool for everything. It isn't a tool for every job. And I'll talk about that in my, in the long-term review that I'm gonna do for this camera. Another camera that I absolutely love using, but I was actually hesitant to put it into this list, is the X100. This is the six, but it doesn't really matter. I was hesitant because this camera is trending right now. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna seem, I don't wanna seem like I'm just doing it for the trend, right? A lot of people are, and that's cool, but I've been using these cameras for over 10 years or about 10 years, a whole decade. So I don't even care if it's the six, it could be the five, it, it doesn't matter. This camera for me is all about the experience. And I know it's it just like, sometimes when I say it, it's, it's like, okay, people are tired of hearing the hype about this camera and the experience and how it makes you feel and experiment and all these things, but it's, it's just the truth. And I'm going to just say it like it is the, the, the experience is different. I don't, I, when I leave the house, I don't have to think about what lens I'm going to put on my camera. I find myself experimenting a little bit more with my photography. I feel like, because this is like my documenting camera, because I don't really edit the files out of here. I, I just stick with the JPEGs. I just experiment and take photos and there's no pressure to take a great photo or not, because it's kind of like, again, it's a document camera. I, I don't feel the pressure to like, I, I got to create a really dope photo with this camera. No. Is it a very expensive documenting camera? Yes. It's very expensive for what I use it for, but it brings, it does bring back some fun into my life. It really does. Uh, when, you know, compared to other cameras, because the form factor of this camera is very small, discreet. It looks like a little film camera is not intimidating to use. So if I want to do a little street photography, I'm going to take pictures of people. They're not looking at me like I'm like, I did something wrong. You know what I'm saying? They kind of just, they really don't look at me any kind of way. Uh, so it's really low key and the lens on it's a 35 millimeter focal length, 35 millimeter equivalent. This is my favorite focal length for environmental portraits. So I like that as well. Um, because I mostly shoot JPEG on this camera, I really love that you can customize the film presets in here. And I love using, uh, I think it's Portra, Portra 400, the really warm, uh, I, I got that recipe, that film recipe on YouTube. And that's my, one of my favorite ones. And I pretty much shoot everything in that format. I also really love the built-in ND filter on here because if I, let's say I'm in, indoors and I quickly go, let's say I walk outside and instead of having to adjust all my settings, I can just hit the, uh, this top button here for ND filter. Boom. Now my exposure is right. I could take that photo or whatever I want to do without having to go ahead and fiddle with all the, the dials. Another thing I really like about it is the built-in flash. Uh, not a lot of people talk about it, but the flash really does give you that Polaroid look, that that instant camera look. And for some, sometimes, I mean, it's a whole vibe and you don't even have to post it, but even for family shots, snapshots with friends, like it does, it, it is a vibe for sure. There's a lot of other things I like and there's a lot of things that I don't like as well, but that's not the kind of video that I'm trying to make. So 
One thing that people get wrong on the internet though about this camera, they, they come up with alternatives to the Fuji X106. I, and I think that just because a camera is small and lightweight doesn't mean that it's an alternative. This camera is a very, it's a, it gives, I'm telling you, you have to use it to, to know what I mean. Or, to, or maybe you don't, maybe you don't appreciate that, but I, I, I love the all-in-one. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. <laughs>